Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is your girl Priscilla. I am your host on today. Today we are talking about a very sensitive subject. A lot of people around the world do not like to talk about the word marriage. They don't want to be married. They don't want anybody to talk about marriage marriage to them. But for all of my married people that's out there and all of the many people that want to be married, this podcast episode is definitely for you. I am speaking from experience, so I do have a lot of knowledge and wisdom on marriage. I have been married multiple times, unfortunately, but that's not why we're here. So what we are going to discuss today, my subject is you must be transparent in your marriage. Subtopic, being married is not easy. I'll say that once again. You must be transparent in your marriage and being marriage is being married is not easy. A lot of people, they jump in these relationships and they want to hurry up and get married because most of the people, they are ready for the big ceremony, trying to impress their family members and friends. But after the wedding dress has been placed in the, in the closet and the tuxedo has been hung up and all of your family and friends have gone back to their normal lives, then the real marriage begins. And I can honestly say, if you do not start your marriage with God being the head of the marriage, your marriage will not work. You have to let the Holy Spirit, you have to let God lead your marriage because you cannot in this day and time have a healthy marriage with the absence of God and the Holy Spirit. You must have God and the Holy Spirit. And we're not going to forget about Jesus because Jesus said that no man can come to the Father except by me. So we got to put Jesus in there because prayers of the righteous avail of much. And when I pray, I always ask Jesus Christ to help lead and guide me. I ask the Holy Spirit to help lead and guide me. I ask God to help lead and guide me in his son Jesus name. So I'm going to tell you like this. So many marriages, they fall apart because they allow family members and friends and co-workers to come in and plant little negative seeds in their heads about their spouse. Now, in the first place, we should not go out and discuss our spouses to family members, co-workers, or anybody that's not in the household. The marriage is between the covenant of marriage is between you and your spouse. And of course, God, because you make a vow before God to honor, obey, and respect the person that you are married to. Now, we will go over 10 scriptures that will strengthen your marriage, but I will give you that at the end of the podcast episode. Now, we're going to talk about why it is important for you to be transparent in your marriage. If a marriage is not based on, off of honesty, communication, trust, loyalty, and respect, your marriage will be doomed. You must be able to communicate with the person that you say you are in love with. Things are going to happen in your life that you must be able to communicate with the other person. A lot of times we sit and we hold things in because we don't know how to communicate. And as we sit and hold all all of these things in, it makes us become bitter. We start resenting the person that we're with. And the whole time, the other person have no idea 
that you feel the way you feel because you haven't been able to go communicate how you feel with that person. And you'll sit back and you'll just hold all of these grudges and 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 um, hatred in your heart towards the person that you're married to. And all along, it could just be an honest mistake or honest miscommunication, lack of communication. Um, so at the end of the day, you got to be very transparent with the amount of money that you have uh, bring it to the table. A lot of people have financial issues in their marriage because one person don't know how to save and the other person is over there saving every penny they get because they know uh, rainy days do come. And then you have some people in a marriage, they don't even talk about how much money they have in the bank account. They're solely living off of your income. And see, that could become very strenuous because if one person is trying to foot all of the bills, I mean like everything in the household, that can really cause stress. And then what I've noticed, when a person is the primary source of income in a household, they don't have much time to spend at home. They are always working. Most of the time they work one or two jobs, sometimes three jobs, just trying to keep the household going. So I, I strongly recommend that when there's two people involved in a marriage, you do need to sit down, create a budget, stick to the budget, and be open and honest about the amount of income that is coming in that household because the last thing you want is, again, people holding back finances that could help the home, but yet they're being selfish and not contributing to the household. So the other spouse is struggling, doing everything they can to keep the household afloat. Okay, secondly, being transparent in how you feel. If somebody hurt you in the marriage, Let's just say um, your spouse come, comes home and you have done everything you can um, basically throughout the day to make the environment very peaceful. And let's just say you do something extra for this person and they don't acknowledge the fact that you did that extra, um, extra deed for them or I like to call it extra... Um, I, it's not even what you would say extra. Just say you go above and beyond the normal duties. So like on your regular day, you may just clean the house, cook, and um, make sure that the meal is fixed for the next day or already prepped for the next day. But you may do something extra like maybe go ahead and run the bath water and then the spouse come home and they don't even acknowledge the fact that you you ran the bath water for them. I know that sounds petty, but a lot of times people want to hear you say, well, thank you for running my bath water for me. Um, that meant a lot. So a lot of times when you don't communicate, it, say, for instance, the person did not thank you for running the bath water. Now you're in your feelings and instead of you communicating, saying, well, baby, I didn't like the fact that you didn't, you know, say thank you for me, uh, you know, running your bath water because it's not an obligation. I did that out of, you know, out of, um, how, how can I put it? Uh, I know the word that I'm looking for. I'm, I'm not obligated to run your bath water, but I did it as a privilege. You know what I'm saying? I, I just felt like you deserve your bath water ran today, you know? So I just went ahead and, and ran the bath water. S something as simple as that can cause a whole week of, you know, not speaking to each other per se, or you speaking, but it's dry or, or whatever. But Sometimes the things that you think don't matter, the other person really do care about it. So you have to respect each other's feelings. So instead of always brushing off that, that person's feelings 
and how they feel about certain things, you should really literally take the time to listen to that person and understand their point of view. You don't always have to agree, but you must give them the opportunity to express how they feel. And then you can either agree to disagree or you can say, well, yeah, baby, you're right. Or, you know, well, right now, um, I just think that respectfully, um, I don't want to talk about that subject right now. You know, can we table this and come back to it? Okay, another thing you need to be transparent in. If you are falling out of love with the person that you're married to, I strongly suggest that you sit down and talk to that person because it may be something that you can fix or maybe something that they are willing to fix. You can't just assume a person knows how you feel because if you don't communicate then the person may think everything is fine and the whole time you're sitting there planning, you know, planning your, your escape and that's not fair to the other person. So I think that we should definitely sit down and communicate and tell each other how we really feel it could save a whole lot of stress and and unfortunate divorces. Okay, so, so many people, they want to hurry up and get married. They want the fancy dress, you know, the, the big church and all of the flowers and the accolades and, and, and praises from people. After that wedding is over, I'm telling you, it's no longer <laughs> like the honeymoon stage. A lot of people have said, my marriage is still like we're on a honeymoon. Well, good for you. Everybody's marriage is not like that. So for all of the people that feel like, you know, the honeymoon stage is over, you need to create ways to bring the spark back into your marriage. You have to always date each other. You can't assume you know everything about your spouse. No one knows everything about any person on this earth. I have kids and I do not know everything about them. So you can only imagine it's impossible to know everything about your spouse. Now, my suggestion would be to date each other on a consistent basis, always say something nice about your partner um, on a day-to-day -day basis. You can send little nice text messages, you know, saying, baby, I appreciate you cutting, cutting the grass um, this weekend, or baby, I appreciate you putting the clothes in the dryer. You know, make them feel appreciated and vice versa. You know, you want to feel appreciated. So, if at any point in the marriage you feel unappreciated, sit down and talk. Again, all of this ties back to communication. Communication is vital in a marriage. Communication is vital in any type of relationship, whether it be friends, family, or whatever. A lot of times people shut down. Instead of communicating with each other, they just shut down. And so at, at some point, you know, somebody got to be the bigger person and say, hey, I think we need to talk. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go over the 10 scriptures that can strengthen your marriage. Now, these 10 scriptures, excuse me, I got tongue tied. These 10 scriptures can strengthen your marriage and they can also strengthen you. So the first scripture is Proverbs 3 and 33. It says, he blesses the home of the righteous. If you be about your father's business, he will be about your business. You cannot be a household that always do crooked things or do crooked things at all. I mean, like, why would a person want to live crooked anyway? Anything that we need, God can offer it to us. So why go around doing schemes and scams in the first place? All right. Secondly, um, we have Joshua 1 and 9. It says, be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be dis discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So God is always with us. He just sometimes sit and wait for us to call on him instead of calling on our friends and family. All right, number three, we have Proverbs 3, 3 through 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tab tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Be faithful in your marriage. Do not tip out on your spouse. Do not text and, and talk to other people, giving them the false hope of you and them being together. You know, you never want to entertain anybody and make them feel as if they have an opportunity to take you from your spouse. Number four, Proverbs 3, excuse me, number five, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two are better than one. If either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. That's a true statement. Sometimes you wake up and you're not in your best mood and and you may just feel a little down and depressed. The person that you're with, they're supposed to be able to be able to lift up your spirits. If the person you're with can never lift you up, they can't they can't ever say anything positive or make you feel better. You may want to rethink that <laughs> because you you don't want somebody that's always negative around you. You don't want somebody that never see good in people. You, you want somebody that's going to say, hey, it's going to be okay. God's going to pull us through. You know, don't worry about anything. It's going to be all right. God got us. You want them kind of people around you cheering you on. You don't want somebody around you, you sulking in misery, and they over there sulking in mi misery too. You got to have a praying husband or a praying wife, somebody that can pray you out of these situations that the enemy may bring your way. The flesh is going to always be at war with the spirit, but you got to let the Holy Spirit lead you. And, and, and what you do need is somebody that's going to that's gonna support you and help you along the way so you won't have to fight all these battles on your own. Okay, so the next one is the Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Always seek peace in your marriage. If you see an argument is about to get out of hand, you know, sometimes you need to walk away. Just go in another room and pray and talk to God and then come back and, and talk to your your mate about, you know, the, the situation. And sometimes you can't talk about it in that moment. So just, like I say, table it and talk about it on another day. All right. Next is Colossians 4 and 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Let it be full of grace. Think before you speak. Don't always say the first thing that comes to mind. I used to be bad about that. If it if it came up, it came out. And that that really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. But as I grew in God, I learned that you can't you can't go through life speaking everything that's on your mind. Okay, and next we have Proverbs 16 and 24. And it says, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. 
gracious words that goes back to being full of grace you have to be very gracious with the words that you speak because a lot of people you may hurt their feelings but they'll never tell you and then after a while like i say they'll walk around with bitterness and and resentment and then you're trying to figure out well dog why they treat me so bad well they they are still holding on to something that you said two years ago instead of talking about it they just decided to hold it in all right and the next one is jeremiah 29 and 11 for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord i love this scripture plans for welfare and not for evil to give you hope and a future god he pray excuse me he plans for us to have a great future he he doesn't plan for us to live poor he doesn't plan for us to go without he doesn't like to see us struggling and suffering um god is a, a god of grace and of mercy and he really and truly want the best for us sometimes we put ourselves in situations that god did not even intend for us and then we expect him to get us out of it but it doesn't work like that all right last but not least philippians 2 3 through 4 do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourselves let each of you look not only to his own interests but also to the in interests of others stop being selfish it's not always about you everybody wants you to help build their business and help build um things for them like you want support in everything that you do but you don't ever support nobody stop being selfish and know that god is not pleased with with the spirit of selfishness and with all of the things that i've said in this podcast one thing i want to leave you with there's going to come a time when your spouse is not able to sexually fulfill you financially hold their end of the bargain their their obligations there's going to come a time when your spouse may shut down and, and do not communicate everything does not lead to divorce don't be so quick to divorce i'm speaking from experience um there's things that i went through back when i was young and i'm like i'm not going through this i'm out of here file for a divorce and i got a divorce as you get older you learn that there is no perfect marriage there is no perfect person we should strive to be perfect like our father which is in heaven but we got to learn how to how to love each other unconditionally and and more so realize that nobody's perfect and when things start falling apart you have to remain loyal even in the midst of the chaos in the marriage every time something goes wrong you can't run out and communicate with other men and females about your your spouse because that leads to infidelity so i will say this before i go keep god first in your marriage always pray about everything and the holy spirit will lead you and guide you have a blessed day. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully this wasn't a podcast of rambling, but more of um, inspiration and motivation to stay in your marriage, fight the fight of faith, and, and, and rely on God through it all. Have a blessed day until next week. Y'all stay safe.